This is Heinz Ward, Pro Bowl wide receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Heinz Ward makes the kinds of plays all great wide receivers make. Grabbing it at the five, diving for the pylon. Touchdown, wow. Pittsburgh! Wow, what a play by Heinz Ward! But he is perhaps best known for making the kinds of plays many receivers never make. The kind that earn praise rarely reserved for one of the game's glamour positions. He plays receiver like uh, um, like he's a linebacker. I mean, you see him running 50 yards across the field just to get a block, and a big block at that. He takes as much satisfaction with a good block as he does with making a catch. We used to laugh at coaches who'd say they like this receiver or that receiver because he can block. You know, we say, well, what about him catching? You know, he's a receiver. I don't, I don't care about his blocking, but Heinz Ward is the toughest blocker and receiver I've ever seen. Plus, he's catching all these passes. He does it all. He's a joy to watch. I like to be the most complete player that I can be. You know, and blocking is want to. Either you want to block or you don't want to block. I know when I go across the middle, nobody's going to try to lay up on me or tackle me soft. I never heard of a soft tackle before. They're going to try to knock my head off. And that's just the approach that I take to the game. I'm going to go out there, and if I get an opportunity to hit you and block you, then I'm going to do it. Hines Ward's tenacity on a football field is uncommon. So, too, is the story of how it came to be. In 1975, a 25-year-old Korean woman named Kim Young-hee fell in love with an American serviceman. They married, had a son, and moved to America. It was a long journey for a young mother, but nothing compared to the one she was about to begin. A month after arriving in the suburbs of Atlanta, her husband left her. Suddenly, she was alone in a foreign culture with a one-year-old child, unable to speak the language, with no one to turn to but herself. She worked seven days a week to support her son. But just after he turned three, the father returned and took him away to live in Louisiana. Everything in her life had been taken away from her. But Kim never stopped fighting for the one thing she cared about most, her son, Heinz Ward. My mother would come back and visit me, and it was kind of, she stood out, you know. An Oriental lady coming in into the ghetto <laughs> and then walking me around. She became a strange and infrequent presence in his life, but she was determined to bring him home. And after four years, she did. This is when I stayed with my dad. <laughs> That was bad, then. Terrible. When I first moved my mom, I, I really didn't know much about the Korean customs, so I, I hated it. Like, my mom used to cook, cook Korean food. We used to take our shoes off all the time. And I was kind of ashamed at first, because all my friends used to come in. She did everything she could to make him comfortable. Still working two to three jobs, often at minimum wage. She somehow saved enough to buy a three-bedroom house and bought her son anything he wanted. But all he really wanted was to be away from her. It got to the point where I just got frustrated getting teased, and I kind of let the kids get the best of me. You know, ended up, my mother had to drive me to school, and uh, I just seen all the kids looking, they was pointing, and I kind of scrunched down into the car, like, real low. And uh, my mom kind of, you can see her look out the side, you know, of her eye around the corner, and. Uh, and I kind of think she just, you know, here I am busting my tail off for you to try to give you all the nice things, and you're ashamed of me as your mother. And uh, when I got out the car, you know, I told her bye, and when I looked back, you know, she was kind of 
She had a tear in her eye. She was kind of crying. 그건 좀 섭섭하고 화가 났지만 그래서 그때 화가 나가지고 창피하면 나가라고 내가 안 그래. When I look back and and saw her crying, that that really uh, I grew up real fast. You know, I really and no matter what the kid said to me, you know, I accepted being a Korean and you know half Korean, half black, and and that's who I am. I mean, either you like me or you don't. Once he put on a football uniform, everyone liked him. At the University of Georgia, team injuries forced Ward to start at quarterback, running back, and wide receiver in a span of seven weeks. He was becoming the gridiron version of his mother, sacrificing himself for the good of others, overcoming any obstacle in his path. They call me the jack of all trades, but master of none. Going into my senior year, I really never had a position coach, so I really never thought I could make it to the pros. In 1998, the Steelers bet a third round pick that he had everything he'd need to make it in the NFL. When he came here, he was uh, a very raw receiver, but he was always a very physical player. By the end of his rookie year, he was the best player on the Steelers' special team. By the end of his second year, he was their leading receiver. But as his third season began, he found himself buried on the bench behind two first round picks, drafted to start ahead of it. All of a sudden, he was an odd man out. But you never heard him complain. He just worked his butt off uh, to the point where the coaches had to make a tough decision. In 2001, he won his job back. And this time, he never let go. It's caught for the touchdown! In his fifth season, only Marvin Harrison caught more passes than Heinz Ward. But those who watch him most remain just as impressed with the little plays he makes as the big ones. You know, I'm just uh, glad to say I, I play with him because he inspires us as teammates to play harder because you see him doing it. Well, hey, the ball wasn't given to me, but I can go down and block somebody. It, it spawns the attitude. I love playing. I love the game. If you ever watch me, I'm always smiling. People always say, why do you smile so much? I'm actually laughing. You can hear me running down the sideline the whole time. And I remember one particular play, uh, Tommy Maddox, he was my lead blocker. I'm talking behind Tommy. Go, go, go. <laughs> and he said, uh, he hear me giggling behind him. He's like, was you laughing at me when he was running in reverse? I was like, yeah. He's like, man, you weird, you weird. But I'm having a blast. I get hit. I get up laughing. I'm like, that's a good hit. You hit me. I'm going to get you back, but that's a good hit. <laughs> He's a little Mighty Mouse. You know, he has a little Mickey Mouse tattoo, but I think I call him Mighty Mouse. That's me playing. Mickey Mouse is smiling. I'm smiling. He does bear a resemblance to a tiny superhero with a giant heart, but it's not Mighty Mouse or Mickey. It's the five foot woman who came from Korea and never gave up on herself or her son. My whole career has been what my mother faced her whole life. Things don't happen the way you plan, but you know, hard work, with hard work and, and being persistent, then good things and positive things happen to you. Without my mom, all this wouldn't be possible. You know, who knows how my life would have turned out. Guns. 음, 사람이 열심히 살면 그 끝이 좋다는 거를 제가 좀 알았으면 <웃음>